Hi, I'm John, and we're here looking at the W0 Arbitrary Wave Oscillator module. Also included will be some more details about the zoom control. All of the zero series modules are laid out in rows where there's a control voltage input which accepts full plus to minus 10 volt CVs or audio signals. This is followed by an inverting attenuator which also has a gain of two or more and an offset amount. So this row here controls the pitch of the oscillator, this row controls the phase, and this row controls the symmetry of the waveform. If we listen to the built-in sine wave initially, here just being driven by the MIDI input which decodes MIDI coming off the bus. It also accepts a calibrated volts per octave input but for simplicity here it's tracking MIDI. With a second oscillator here we can listen to some of the modulation. Here we have the phase modulation frequency modulation So here we have the difference between the phase input, which is linearly scaled and gets a linear modulation of the frequency, and the CV input for the frequency here, which is exponentially scaled. Additionally, if we change the waveform to a That's the pulse width modulation from the symmetry input, the square wave output, and the sawtooth output uses the symmetry to control sawtooth bending between triangles and sawtooth. Back with the simple sine wave input, we could explore some of the zoom controls here. So the knobs, when in the neutral zoom position, have a useful musical range available to them. When zoomed out, this starts to reach extremely large ranges that are accessible in these modules rather than having a switch to switch between high and low frequency ranges instead we can now pick where the center of the range is while zoomed out so the knob always picks off where you left off When this is too coarse a control in the normal range, the
the zoom in is able to provide. The equivalent function of a coarse and fine control but all contained within the one knob. After zooming back to the original position it again picks off where it was. So the knob is always reacting to movements. It's simply its relative position that leaves away from a normal zero and that can always be returned when zooming out. If we listen here to this oscillator modulating another, we can see the extreme range that's available from it. Here we'll listen to So from ultrasonic above hearing range, we come down through audio into more traditional LFO rates, into extremely slow LFO rates, topping out at the bottom beyond one hour in time. Returning back to the output here, we can use SD cards to load arbitrary waveforms into the output. Here we have a a short sample of noise. This takes whatever waveforms on the card and loops it as the waveform of the oscillator. again useful down into LFO ranges so it's not only possible to create arbitrary oscillator waveforms but also any shape of LFO function Here's an extremely short sample of noise, only a few dozen samples long. At the higher pitches we lose all the high frequency information and just hear a tuned oscillator, while at the lower ranges we're picking up all that strong harmonic content in the noise. Switching here to a card full of sine waves that have been sampled. We've thrown away most of the samples in sampling it and reduced it to only a few samples between, say, 5 and 15. This is playing back without any interpolation, so all the steps between the samples are played back as individual jumps, as traditional synthesizers have. When loading, when loading a waveform, if the zoom key is held, it enables interpolation on the output of the waveform for a smoothed output. versus the rich in overtones without the interpolation. Selecting 
different sampling rates. Provides different overtone patterns.